Okay, I want to talk to you a little bit about isotopes. Uh, let me give you a simple example of isotopes. There are um, three isotopes of hydrogen. So all hydrogen atoms have one proton in the nucleus, and of course they have one electron outside the nucleus. So because this atom has one proton, we call it hydrogen. This atom has one proton, we'll call it hydrogen. This atom has one proton, we'll call it hydrogen. Now there happens to be three types of hydrogen. I draw one neutron in this hydrogen atom, and I'm going to draw two neutrons in this hydrogen atom. So these are three of the types of hydrogen. They're, they're actually called isotopes. And we'd have to call all three of these atoms hydrogen because all three of them have one proton in their nucleus. And if you got one proton in the nucleus, you're a hydrogen atom. But right now it's ambiguous. We can't call all three of these hydrogen because, well, they're a little bit different from one another. Actually, this one is three times as heavy as this one. This one's two times as heavy as this one. So, I mean, if we were to write the symbols for these, it would look like this. Remember, this is the mass number, so this is the mass of the nucleus. There's one particle in the nucleus, so we put a 1 here. That's the mass number. There's two particles in the nucleus here, so it's mass number 2. There's three particles in the nucleus, so it's mass number 3. And it's just real simple to call this one hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, and hydrogen 3. And that's the way isotopes are named. Isotopes are named simply by the name of the element, which comes from the number of protons in the nucleus, and the mass number. Now, let me go ahead and give you the definition of an isotope now. They are going to be atoms with the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. And certainly we can see that's the case for these three atoms that I've drawn on the board. Same number of protons. They all have one proton, so they're all hydrogen. But they have differing number of neutrons. Zero neutrons, one neutron, and two neutrons. Okay. Now each, it actually turns out that each element in the, in the periodic table they often have multiple numbers of these isotopes, and each, each number of isotope comes in a certain percentage or a certain abundance. Like with hydrogen, there's very little hydrogen-3, so we just say there's trace amounts of that. Of these two types, it turns out that 99.985% of the hydrogen atoms that we see or hydrogen 1, like in a sample of water here on Earth. If I look at, the, look at that sample of water, the H2O, and we look at all the hydrogen atoms in the water, we're going to find 99.985% of the hydrogen atoms in that water are going to be hydrogen 1. And the remaining 0.015%, not much, is hydrogen 2. And we call these the percent abundances. So most of the hydrogen that we see is hydrogen 1, and there's a fraction that's hydrogen 2, and every once in a while, this is a very small amount, we're going to see a hydrogen 3. Okay, let's look at this for magnesium. In a sample of magnesium, there happens to be uh, three uh, different isotopes of magnesium that makes up any sample of magnesium. And this I'm looking at slide number 7. Slide number seven in the PowerPoint. So there's magnesium 24. That's one of the isotopes of magnesium. There's magnesium 25. And there's magnesium 26. And of these three isotopes, the mass of each, it's close to 24 AMU, but it's not exact. If you want to know why it's not exactly 24 AMU, you can come by the office and we'll talk about it. But the mass of magnesium 24 is 23.985 
AMU, atomic mass units. The uh, percent abundance, excuse me, the mass of magnesium 25 is 24.986. AMU, once again, is very close to 25. And then the mass of magnesium 26 is 25.983 AMU. And it turns out that the percent abundance of each of these isotopes of magnesium is as follows. 78.99% of the magnesium that we find is magnesium 24. 10% is magnesium 25. And the remaining 11.01% is going to be magnesium 26. And this, th these masses of the different isotopes and the percent abundances are actually how we get the atomic weights of each particular element. So if you look at magnesium on the periodic table, you can find that on slide 10 of the PowerPoint. You'll see a uh, magnesium, atomic number is 12, and you'll find the atomic weight is 24.305. And this atomic weight is the average weight of all of the isotopes of magnesium. Now if it was 50% this, 50% this, and, and zero this, we just take the average of these two numbers. But it's not 50-50. There's a certain percentage that goes with each uh, isotope, with each mass number. Excuse me, with each, uh, with each mass. And so I want to show you how we can use these values to calculate the atomic weight or the average weight of the magnesium atom. And it works like this. If I want to know the average weight of a magnesium atom, that's going to be equal to the mass of the first isotope, 23.985, times its percent abundance. So I'm going to write that as a percent. 0.7899. Excuse me, I'm going to write it as a decimal, not a percent. Then we do the same thing here, but we add it. So we're going to add to this 24.986 times its percent abundance in decimal form. That's 0 0.1000 plus the mass of magnesium 26, which is 25.983 times its percent abundance, which is 1101.1101 written in decimal form. Let's do the calculation. Let's see. 23.985 times 0.7899. That gives me, let's see, the average, which is the average mass, which is the molar mass of magnesium in grams per mole. This times this gives me 18.946. I'm going to use four significant digits and I'm just going to count this one, it's not significant, but I'm just going to leave it there so I don't get a rounding error. We're going to add to that 24.986 times 0.1, well that's easy, that's 2.498 with a little 6 that we're going to carry, and then we're going to add to this 25.985 times 0.1101. 2.860 with a 9. All right, so the molar mass of these is going to be 18.946 plus 2.4986 plus 2.8. 609, and it looks like if I'm adding all these together, I can go to two digits past uh, the decimal point. So the average mass of a magnesium atom, well, my calculator is 24.306. So 
So it's 24.31 if we do it to the nearest hundred. Well, there you have it. 24.31 grams per mole for uh, the average mass of a magnesium atom. And that's where we get the atomic mass from. From the percent abundances of each isotope multiplied by the appropriate masses.